Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another breakdown. Today, we are looking at daytime interiors, how to do it and make it look natural. Uh, we're looking at a spot that does it really well and some interesting angles. We're going to talk about some of that and basically, yeah, how to make something feel quite natural. And we're going to look at the angles that they choose, why they do that, what are some of the pros and cons, and then hopefully how you can take that into your own work and incorporate it in your next job. So let's jump straight into it. This is a commercial that was directed by Bonnie Moir, I think it is. I'd never seen the ad before. I just uh, randomly came across it and thought, well, this would be a good example of exactly what we should be looking for. So as we play through it here, you can see some things. As we play through, there's a, a little girl that goes into this room. She sort of peeks in and starts to find things that I think were in her mom's old room or something like that. She's looking around, right? But the key here, the thing that we're going to look at is uh, how the framework applies here. What, what are some of the strengths of the cinematography and the blocking and the composition relative to all of that? and how you can take some of these ideas away, right? Because it doesn't, not everything that looks great has to be some giant big budgeted thing. This is, this can be applied to whatever level you're at, right? You can take any of the elements here that we're going to talk about and apply it to your own work and hopefully you'll see some improvements. So there's lots of good looking stuff in here. All of it pretty much follows the framework if we scrub through quite quickly. Some workout sequences that we've talked about in the past that follow the same sort of rules and then we're out. Okay, so that is essentially the ad. Let's start with the room reveal. This is, again, natural daytime interiors. That's what we're going for. And it helps that you don't have lots of people in the room where you have to cut to lots of different angles. Anytime you have a montage style ad, it's going to be easier because the less angles that you have to light for in a room, the, the easier it is, right? The less uh, things you need to take account of, the less factors at play. So you can be a lot, uh, it's quicker. And, and you can just be much more focused on that one specific shot rather than saying, okay, it looks great for that one shot, but what about when we come around and do the over the shoulder on the other person? The less amount of variables, the easier it is to do. So let's take a look here. We'll go full screen. Da -da -da -da. So we got this nice little introduction shot of just the feet coming in, right? And this is framework, right? Keep it interesting in the background with a little bit of light, darkness, little tiny light here. We're lighting from, I mean, it's not, it really is upstage, right? Just imagine this is somebody's face and you are essentially lighting the framework style here. It just so happens to be on feet instead. So we got point of interest, nice floor with the reflection going on, uh, shallow depth of field, and then the wrap around to darkness. Now this is dark, right? This is no fill territory. And this is a creative choice that you make. You say, how much are we going to wrap it around? How pretty are we going to make it? How naturally are we going to make it? And when I say the word natural, I mean, it usually means, right, there's a good way to do natural and there's a bad way to do natural. Natural, the bad way, is just showing up there and shooting it and it looks terrible, right, because you haven't adjusted to it. The, the natural that I'm talking about is what people think natural is when they watch something, right? And that means that you shouldn't feel the light, it shouldn't feel lit, but it should still look nice, okay? And that's what this is, right? Playing to all of our strengths, little tiny edge all the way down the leg, same thing down here. Those nice little lines that just pick up interest. Then you've got the reflection in the background and we are shooting, I don't know if you can tell there, but we are shooting into the L of the room as well, right? So that's our setup shot. We haven't even gotten into um, faces yet, but you can see it. If you can light a face, every subject becomes that face and you can apply the same uh, ideas and the same framework to it. We scroll through to the peek through. Now this shot is nice and easy, right? This, this helps because you got this cool door here to add some light, but as the door opens up, you can see the diffusion that's in the window here that is lighting up this whole frame. What really helps in this shot is not only the framing that we've got here and the little peek around and the fact that we've got that reflection there that'll tell us all the lighting, but you got the little practical on just as a point of interest, right? Practical's always on. Then you have the wood, which doesn't m make the light bounce all around and make things really, really flat. So you want to keep interest. So you're looking for those textures that will soak up wood. So a lot of the times when you see really well done commercials, they are set in quirky locations and not in some brand new white walled home because that's boring. It's hard to create contrast and it's hard to keep contrast in a white walled room. If you have something a little bit older style where there's wallpaper or where there is some texture on the walls, that's always going to be easier to keep the interest both through lighting and through color of whatever the wall ends up being. Okay, we scrub ahead from there. Oops. We go open up a little bit. You can see something's playing and we're setting up here. If we scroll back, we are setting up for our single source, right? The more you can do single source, the easier it is because there's less elements to screw up. 
right? It's harder to think about and then to do the balancing. It's like, it's like when we're talking about wrapping the light around, it's you get much better results or much easier to get better results if you just balance light rather than add like an electric poly because now you're having to sit there and balance levels and it's really hard and it can look quite fake because it is fake, right? Just bouncing just is a little bit more natural. So we go from there to this shot. This shot is the hardest to make look nice, right? Because you got a lot of different elements. You could imagine if you swung this way with the camera more and we're shooting more into the wall, it all of a sudden becomes really, really flat. This location works well because the door opens this way, which is the way that we were looking there. And then you can still light in here. The problem with lighting in this way, as we're doing here, is it can get really flat if you get too flat to the door. Whereas here, whoever shot this did a really good job of just maintaining the depth because we're using our shallow depth of field. And then this little tiny leak of light, which just gets in there in the eyes. Like that's a beautiful looking shot. Had you taken this a little bit further, it wouldn't be quite as nice. Or had we come around more, it wouldn't be quite as nice. So we go from there to the next one. This is nice, right? Silhouette just creates some interest. This is a really, I mean, the whole commercial is quite down in all of the levels. If we bump out, let's see, I mean, you're, there's nothing there, right? Just absolutely nothing there. Um, and that's the look. Right, go from there, keep going, go to the walls, same thing. Look at those highlights, barely above 50%, right? Just scratching the surface. Most of it is here, but it's here, but expanded, right? That's the elements of the squeeze and drop that we always talk about is expanding this area. This is the area where you want the expansion. You don't want the expansion up here. You want it down here. So take this and thick and fatten it up as much as you can. Okay, we scroll forward. Okay, but again, we don't see the window. We don't see the instrument that we're lighting from. It's over here where we're doing the lighting, right? And we're just cutting it off so we get this nice little area of lit up bit and then contrast and using elements in the foreground and shooting along the wall rather than straight at the wall. And we go keep going forward. Now this one, let's go full screen. This one is great because you could easily do this the other way, right? You could easily have her looking more that way. But by looking this way with the face and this way with the eyes, you're getting the framework, right? We're getting big soft light this way, using the neg that ends up happening from the actual wall itself, right? Just sucking up all of that light while still having all of the depth of the doorway, still having all of this back there. Just a really, really good looking shot. Scroll forward from there. Then we're, boom, we're, we're sitting down. Now you see, well, this is not curtain combo. This is the pull down, which is not as nice as the curtain combination because the curtains you can then use as in the shot cutters like you can use them as to cut off the light and they're in shot and it's okay you can use them to shape and people just buy it like oh yeah everybody has curtains but you look around not many people have that style these are okay I mean these are the next best thing because you can still get rid of the tops of the frames of windows if things are too hot you can still add some shape because if you rolled these up you can imagine how much more level would be all over the place up here and it would kill the mood that we're going for. So, uh, you know, if you can't get curtains, these are the next best, best thing. Diffusion straight on the window. You can see this window just lighting up like crazy. I would imagine now, you can see there's one, two, three of these things. Does this open up at all? Let's see, it doesn't really open up, but you would be pumping the majority of the light would be coming through the, this window and the window that you can't see, not so much this one. And you can see in the levels there because we don't want this window to look completely terrible. Um, this one is on the edge and then this one behind is probably doing the majority of the work because we want most of it coming this way down the line, right? Hitting here, hitting here. And again, because we're able to, you know, if you push the light this way, push the light deeper into the shot, you're going to get this more in shadow, right? Which is what we want. The light's going to hit here and then we get more shadow, right? We're just creating areas along the frame of lightness and darkness because we can show the light on some of the surfaces, show it, and then hide it from the other bits. And we're angling the camera to look into the L of the room. Again, into the point of the room. And we're on this side of the line down the middle of the room, looking towards the windows. This is the classic framework setup. Now we're getting a little bit edgy because we're starting to see these windows, but this is the, this is the general direction. If you walk into a location, you're thinking, well, how are we going to shoot this one? Can we can shoot from over here. We could shoot this ad from in this corner of the room looking this way, but then you're going to get subpar results because you're looking into the light side. 
it's going to be really, really hard to make it moody or to, to get any sort of contrast in there because it's all going to be light because you have to pump in light from the windows. Okay, uh, now, next, we come into the close-up. Whoo, man, it softens off pretty quick, this light. So we come from this, right? You got this nice glow in the back. Got heavy light coming in this way to we come around. Oof. And now this is the shot. This is what we were setting up for. This is why in the boards we would have been, okay, this is our, our, our moment here. This little girl, she's going to look up on the wall and boom, we're going to really get into the thick of the commercial. This is the one we want to make look good. So knowing that, we work backwards, figure out what side of the line we have to be on to make this look as good as we can. Then we set the room tone to the levels that we know we're going to be able to get through the window here. And we're just going to take that same light, right, that we set up in the previous shot, and we're just going to soften it off and bring in all the neg that we can to really create this dramatic shape right down here. And you can see it got eye light and it also reaches over to the other one. Not a whole lot here at all. Just that little eye light, just catching, just getting enough. And man, this is a good looking frame with how shallow it is, right? There's none of this, again, going back to the natural thing, there's no, we didn't have to add a fake edge light here or a hair light or anything like that, but it is naturally there because look at the background window, which is great, has the shears on there. There's that little, there's that fattening of the toe of the image. You can feel it in here, right? It's a little bit lifted. It's not completely crushed. Even in here, there's no nothing crushed, right? On either extremes, the highlights or the shadows. It's a little bit lifted, more open. You can see into it more and it just feels, that density feels a little bit more uh, expanded in the toe. And you got this nice line going straight down. You got the shallow depth of field. We got, again, you determine how much wrap that you want, but this is overall, this is a really good image. And you can see we go light to dark to light to dark. And then the dark side of her face just happens to match up with the lit side of the room. Okay. This is, this is what makes it look good. This is why, at least why I like it. This is what immediately draws my like. If you just look at it without thinking, it's a good looking shot. Why is it a good looking shot? Well, you've got all of these elements. And then the three-dimensional, like the, the width of the lens. So this is a wider lens closer to her. You can see it rounds the face quite a bit, which also increases the depth of the shot, which makes it feel three-dimensional. Whereas if you were on a, a, you know, a 75 millimeter across the room, you wouldn't get that, that round, that depth, because it would just cut off. And that's why sometimes it's really nice to go a slightly wider lens and shallower, because you can still have the depth here in the foreground, but you still get that blobbiness in the background, that's still that fall off. So just really, really good looking stuff here from there. And that movement, you feel like the camera movement feels very natural. It's just like a little bit of like, oh, judder. We cut point of view, POV shot, POV, POV from the wrong side here. Again, like this is bread and butter stuff. As soon as you set up that light for the wide, we go back here. This is the hard shot. This is the hard shot. This is the shot there in the schedule. You're going to need 45 minutes to set everything up, make sure it's all good to go. And then you can fire through this. This is diffusion and neg. Next one. This is, the, might be diffusion above here, but probably just neg behind the camera to increase this contrast in here, right? You could diffuse it if you wanted more wrap around, like more over the fingers, but really it's just about shooting towards the window in the shadow, and this is the credit card shot that we always talk about, except now we're writing things down, right? Same exact setup, creating depth, using this, using this bed in the background, even though it's shallow, to create something beyond the frame. And from there, we go back to where we were before, which is an easy win, and we're out outside, right? And the rest of this pretty much follows the framework as well, right? We're in here again, same exact idea, still using that same setup. Everything looks good from this direction. And there's one more thing we wanted to look at, right? Where is it? Are we back in this room ever? No, that's it. Okay. The last thing I'll talk about here is in this, this shot, this is where you could use, say you wanted more ambient in here. This is where you could use the Titan tube rig that we've talked about on the podcast so much. Titan tube rig up here where you just want to lift the room tone because maybe you want to hold this window more. You're not going to lay diffusion on these windows, but you want to hold. Uh, and you don't want it to feel too sourcey. If you put the Titan tube rig up here, and then you can just loosely hang the diffusion material, you could have, you know, uh, however many tubes you wanted here, you could have eight tubes in here, all pressing through something fairly thick, you know, like a full grid up here, so that light just, it just feels like it's falling on things. So you could lift the level of the shadows 
by just upping the room tone. The great thing about the Titan tubes is you put them up there, they're strong enough to get through the diffusion material. You can wrap it and skirt it so it doesn't get all over the walls, right? You want, the, you want this frame to be slightly smaller than the whole room so that you can then skirt it off the wall so it doesn't go on the walls, it just is room tone. And then, then you can balance your contrast that way. Like anytime you're going into those interiors, you either want to black the ceiling or if you want more levels because you're balancing against something, that's when you can put in the Titan tube rig and this is a perfect shot for it because you know we don't see the ceiling, uh, which is obviously a must, but then when we come in here, you can just dial it up and down depending on how much you need from shot to shot. It makes you go really, really quick. The downside is it's hard to set up. It takes time, so you have to get the electrics in there early. They have to have access because you don't want to be doing it uh, the day that you're shooting because it takes a long time to set the whole thing up. So that is going to do it. Uh, a good looking ad and good for in-room naturalistic, like still making things look good, but setting up the right way creates so much less friction to getting good looking images that it's... Uh, it's a must. As soon as you start to see this stuff, you start to see the things that you like follow these same exact patterns. So try it the next time you're out on a shoot and let me know how it goes and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.